You Never Had a Heart, a Good Omens fan fiction, written by Hot Cross Pigeon, read aloud by Sky Asimaru. If you enjoy this podfic, you can check out the original story on Archive of Our Own. If you would like to hear more of my recordings or see some of my own work, you can find me through the pen and screen name of Sky Asimaru. Chapter 2. The Best Laid Plans Ooh! Aziraphale barely breathed, quietly breaking through the demon's tumultuous screaming in his own head. The soft skin around the angel's eyes had gathered in abject misery. Gosh! he said, completely inadequately. <laughs> Crowley spluttered yellow eyes wide as he took in what was left of the knife. It was buried in the angel's chest, right up to the hilt. Goodness, goodness me, amended the angel, his eyes wet and pained. That is, rather unpleasant, actually. Unpleasant? Unfucking pleasant! You, you, fuck, fuck! He was gonna have nightmares about this for years. Forever! Fuck that! He was never sleeping again! He took his hands off the damned handle and raked them into his hair, fisting at the follicles as if they were a particularly stubborn carrot that refused to be pulled from the earth. The slew of expletives that left his mouth had Aziraphale wincing in more than pain, though a lot of it was pain, and that was Crowley's fault. He'd done that. He'd... He'd hurt him. He'd run Aziraphale through the heart. He'd killed him. Satan, what had he done? What had he done? Dear, please, stop being so dramatic, wheezed the angel petulantly. I'm the one who's been inconvenienced. You always have to make things about you. There was blood welling up between them now staining Aziraphale's shirt and beloved waistcoat. Oh, lamented the angel, the real tragedy here is my poor suit. What? He couldn't be serious, except he was. What the actual fuck? Would you be a dear and have it dry-cleaned for me? I'm sure you'll, you'll find a way of seeing to it. Before that awful demon can tarnish it further, the shirt may be a lost cause, though, but the rest, perhaps, uh, perhaps you might play it off as a trophy of sorts. He was going mad. That must be it. You, you're bleeding, angel. You're bleeding all over the place, Crowley heard himself say, numbly, distantly, every part of his being screaming out that this was wrong, that Aziraphale needed help, only he'd been the one to inflict this. What? What? His hands scraped over his cheeks, and then out, fluttering unhelpfully. What should I... what should I do? You're bleeding! Not enough, muttered Aziraphale, white teeth visible as he panted in pain. You... I have to... To pull the blade out. Crowley recoiled at the suggestion. I'm not touching it again. I've done my bit. Well, I'll hardly discorporate fast enough if you don't do something. I hadn't thought you would want to prolong this any longer than need be. The blood has to be... be free to... to move around. And currently... Ah! Oh, dear me. That is quite... Hmm... Crowley could hardly stand it. Angel, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm really fucking sorry. Aziraphale sucked in a gurgling breath, and a tiny bead of blood shone at the corner of his mouth, like a tiny ruby. The knife is impeding the flow of blood, he explained with disconcerting detachment. Just, mm, just take hold of the handle. There's a good fellow. Crowley did so, shakily. That's it. 
Aziraphale gentled. Wonderful. You're doing so well. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! All right. A stuttered breath. Now, give it a good tug. Crowley did. It didn't come out. Ah! <gasps> cried the angel, eyes scrunching up in pain, white teeth clenching, his hands fisting tightly in the manacles. Shit! Crowley let go immediately, as if he'd been burned. Shitty, bollocking, wanky, bollocking wank! He continued to spit at the sight of the white-faced, shivering angel, whose face had contorted in such intense pain for a horrible moment before the expression had shuddered away, smoothed over like a rumpled bedsheet. He wasn't supposed to ever look like that. Crowley was glad the angel had hidden it, because he couldn't bear the sight, and then he felt awful for ever thinking that Aziraphale should hide what he was feeling from him. He really was the worst, wasn't he? The worst being imaginable. Oh, blinked the angel, wetly, once he'd regained his faculties. Oh, I, I thought that might have done it, but oh dear, oh dear. A flicker of pain again quick and darting, like a shadow, a mere trick of the light. It is rather stuck in there, isn't it? Crowley nodded, not trusting his voice, not trusting himself, either, after what he'd done. Not to worry. <clears throat> Aziraphale gasped, pathetically. That's quite all right. A minor setback. Let me... let me think and he hung there and mused for a few moments, with the handle of a bloody knife sticking out of his chest, while Crowley replayed the last ten minutes over and over in his head until he was convinced that he was nothing but a vile, despicable monster. "'I think you'll just have to try again,' concluded the angel, with his eyes closed. We don't seem to have very many options, unless you want to reconsider the decapitation method. No! No, I don't want to bloody reconsider the decapitation method! Angel, I can't do this any more! Crowley growled, because it was easier to be angry. I'm not doing it! It's hurting you too much! Well, yes it is, rather, retorted the angel, with a huff of annoyed breath. "'Because you're taking too long. "'You're working yourself up into a tizzy about it. "'You need to commit to the task at hand. "'If you just give it one swift tug, it's all slippery. "'The miracle a tea towel, dear. "'Do I have to tell you how to do everything? "'A tea towel? "'How is a soaring tea towel going to help? "'Haven't you ever opened a stubborn jar? I'm a demon. If I want a jar open, I miracle it bloody open. Well, get at it with my teeth. I don't... Ugh. It's in too deep, Angel. I can't get a good grip on it. Ugh. You just need to put your back into it. That's all. Put a little effort in and I'm sure it'll come right out. Oh, right. I'm sorry. As some of us aren't as strong as you, oh righteous principality. It's stuck, all right. It's bloody stuck. I tried pulling it out, and it didn't work. And that's that. That's it. I'm done. We just... We need a new plan. Nonsense, dismissed the angel, crossly. Perhaps if you just wiggled it slightly. I'm not wiggling it. Just... Aziraphale's face was so pale now that he appeared almost ghostly, and there was sweat beating on his forehead that had caused his white blonde hair to stick to the skin in damp curls. And that was alarming in itself. Aziraphale didn't sweat. He had never performed enough exercise to warrant it, for one thing. And he'd never allow such a thing to soil his good clothes. The angel's eyelids drooped further with every hitched, staccato breath. His stupidly long eyelashes fluttering like a fanciful moth. Perhaps it won't matter, Aziraphale murmured, slurring a little. I am feeling awfully tired. A few moments more, and 
I'm sure I'll be well on my way. Crowley stiffened suddenly. There, just on the edge of his senses, he took a deep breath in, tasting it, essence of warty old toad. Oh, fuckity, fuck, fuck. Haster. Haster was here, no doubt come to check on his trap, and he was about to find a dying angel in it, and a demon nearby, panicking out of his mind. He's here! Angel! He's here! He hissed, suddenly terrified, as Aziraphale blinked exhaustedly at him. Oh, good. Took him long enough. What? It seems we're out of time. This, nothing else, nothing else for it. Come now, my dear, murmured the angel, encouragingly. Just one big pool, and it'll all be over. Crowley knew he had to, but he couldn't do it. He couldn't. He really, really couldn't. This was horrible. Aziraphale was deep into his amateur dramatics by now, putting on a good show for the approaching demon. Oh, you wicked thing! Clearly it wasn't his best performance, but Crowley couldn't exactly blame the poor bastard. He did currently have a knife wedged into his vital organs. Heaven will hear of this, how you lured me to my doom, and the vile torture thou hast inflicted upon my glorious and righteous person. Laying it on a bit thick, angel. Don't tell me how to perform my own death scene, chided the angel in a stage whisper. I had a hand in some of Shakespeare's finest, you know. Crowley who had never liked any of the gloomy ones, rolled his eyes. Should have guessed. He got the feeling that if the angel had his hands free, he would have been affecting the look of a swooning maiden, the back of his manicured hand against his forehead. Oh, the exquisite agony, the sweet release of death. Look, just pull it out, would you? He hissed at Crowley under his breath. It does sting terribly. I'm doing it. Just stop talking to me. You'll blow our cover. He's behind you, warned the angel, eyes wide. Best get your acting chops on, my dear. Oh, confound you. I admit it. You've bested me. None but you has ever been able to capture me. But it shall, it shall not be the last time we meet. Far from it, and mark my, my words, you cunning serpent. I shall have my revenge. Crowley clenched his eyes shut, grasped the handle with everything he had left, and yanked it out. He cracked one yellow eye open and wished he hadn't. The blood squirted out, and that alone was pretty fucking horrible. And, hey... Maybe he should press pins into his eyes, so he never had to witness that traumatizing shit ever again. There was blood dripping from the angel's mouth now, too, bubbling up and out of his lips. But the worst part was the sound. Aziraphale let out an awful, soft whimper of pain, his breath catching, snagging, like a dark claw over soft fabric. <laughs> Sorry, Crowley screamed with his eyes. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm really fucking sorry. For the love of all that's unholy, please just discorporate already before Haster finds a way to make this even worse. Fuck, I'm so sorry. And Aziraphale, in his final death throes, winked at him. He, he bloody winked as if this was all just a big joke, a silly little magic act that they'd miraculously pulled out of their arse, as if, as if they were in on this charade together and had just outwitted an unsuspecting foe. And oh, my dear, wasn't it ever so clever of them? The demon didn't know whether to laugh or cry. He managed a solitary hiccup. Crowley could feel it deep in the very soul of him when the angel died.
He watched as the light in Aziraphale's eyes dimmed, like a candle flickering out in a storm. And then that was it. That was it. He was gone. The angel's irises were gray and lifeless. His mouth was slack. He slumped forward, and it took all of Crowley's willpower not to catch him, to cradle him close. Roy, couldn't have saved a bit of fun for me, sneered Haster, from somewhere behind him, his breath reeking of blocked sewer pipes and poo. I wouldn't have bothered coming so fast if I thought he'd be dead already. Fuck's sake. Crowley steeled himself. He could do this. He could pretend. He pretended every day of his godforsaken life. Nothing to it. The Serpent of Eden affected a cool look, slinking around to face Haster with an eyebrow raised. Aziraphale's lifeless corporation was behind him now, so he didn't have to see those unseeing eyes. Small mercies, eh? Duke Haster. He smiled his most disconcerting of smiles. To what do I owe the displeasure? The other demon scowled, dark eyes glittering like twin cesspools. Uh, don't give me that bollocks, Crowley. You know exactly why I got dragged all the way out here. Haster jabbed a disgruntled, partially decomposed finger into Crowley's chest, right atop the tender bruise that the handle of the knife had left, when Aziraphale had, when he'd... Prince Beelzebub's giving you a commendation, ain't they? For the capture and torture of a principality. Unofficially, of course. A fucking waste, if you ask me. I would have done things nice and slow. Made it last. Made him scream. I mean, what you even do to him? Bit of amateur stabbing? Puh! I tortured him, said Crowley, convincingly. All the torture, real nasty stuff. Psychological, um, metaphysical, that too. Uh, cosmological, all of that. Really filthy stuff. You wouldn't understand it. <clears throat> it was a fucking rush job and we both know it. But it worked. You're a lucky little shit, Crowley. Crowley had the feeling that he was missing something. Eh? Huh? Haster rolled his inky black eyes and bared his rotting teeth. Well, it's good timing, isn't it? Another week and you were gonna get recalled. Back down to the torture pits for a couple of centuries. You must have got desperate, huh? Pulled out all the stops to get your hands on this angel. Recalled? What? Wait. What? Word is, you'd gone soft. Haster went over to inspect Aziraphale's limp body and grunted, almost in admiration. Huh, right never been able to capture this one before. Heaven of a slippery bastard, ain't he? His eyes narrowed into slits, the yellowed skin around them, scrunching like old paper. Uh, come to think of it, he got out of one of my traps before. Nearly took my eyes out with all his horrible light stuff. Couldn't see straight for weeks. How'd you manage it? Crowley's mouth suddenly went very, very dry. Aziraphale couldn't have known. He couldn't have known about Crowley being possibly sent downstairs soon. That was just... It was a coincidence. Had to be. The angel was well-connected, sure, and kept tabs on all known demons in the area, yeah. But even if he had heard about Crowley being recalled through the grapevine, he wouldn't have... No. Come on. No. Surely. He never would have orchestrated this whole ridiculous scenario, hanging on just long enough to make it look convincing, complete with god-awful acting, just to... to... Holy shit. That bastard. That absolute bastard. Crowley swallowed trying to gather some moisture to wet his tongue. 
His voice was quiet when he finally found it. Well, he rasped, mind going a mile a minute, trying to catch up. Focus on Haster for now. Time to completely freak out later. Right. We all have our secrets. Haster spat a maggot on the floor, looking uninterested. Whatever. Fine. Don't care. I've got my own techniques. How about you get your own bleeding angel trap next time? Oh, was this your trap? Crowley said, with fake surprise, deciding to roll with it. I just happened to stop by, thought I'd get some actual use out of it. Doubt it's seen much action. He allowed a hint of mocking to enter his voice. Ought to be thanking me, really. Oh, and great idea, by the way, he drawled, trapping an angel so he can't even fight back. Just genius, that. It really does it for me, you know, the whole not-getting-my-hands-dirty thing. Haster, who thrilled at getting his hands dirty, who had never had clean hands in his existence, growled out a confused, huh? What are you waffling on about now? You know, I'm just sighing. I think it's a really great idea, the whole unfair advantage thing. I'd probably do the same. I mean, if I was too weak to fight an angel one-on-one. -on -one. Haster glowered, the frog on his head peeping its bulbous eyes out from underneath the white mop of unconvincing hair. Mm, I ain't too weak to fight that prissy little... Hi, hi, hi. I'm not shiming you. I'm actually agreeing with your methods. Crowley put his hands up, innocently. I'm just sighing. It's really easy to kill them when they're defenseless, isn't it? Almost too easy, really. It takes a bit of fun out of it, if you ask me. But who needs fun, right? Even an imp could have managed to nab itself an angel, I reckon, with a trap like this. Could revolutionise the way we do things. Haster had gotten so murderous with anger that the ground was starting to smoke around his bed-raggled shoes, giving off the kind of sulfurous stink one might associate with a soon-to-erupt geyser. Oh, I could have killed him without the trap! I'm a duke of hell, not some sniveling little imp! I've murdered a hundred of them! Me! With no bleeding help! I just squeezed their smug little eyes out, popped off their heads, ate all their internal bits with my own teeth. Well, thought Crowley, Aziraphale definitely wouldn't have enjoyed that. Crowley, barely, stopped himself from making too disgusted a face. He couldn't help the slightly simpering bottom lip, though. Well, guess you need a little help every now and then, though, eh? What with the trap and everything. And I don't want to call it cheating, necessarily, but... I don't need a sodding trap to kill me an angel! And there it was, finally. With any luck, there'd be none of these fucking awful things laying about any more. Oh, of course! Crowley nodded, wedging his hands in his pockets and leaning just so. Sure. Yep, me too. Don't worry, your secret's safe with me. Haster went over and dismantled the demonic trap, grumbling under his fetid breath, and with a heated, Fuck off! He turned into a horde of wriggling maggots and slewest off down the nearest drain. <laughs> Gladly, muttered Crowley. He stomped down on a stray maggot that he'd trapped under his snakeskin heel with no little satisfaction. And that was that, then. He was alone. Sort of. Aziraphale's body had made a soft, muffled thump as it had been released from its shackles, and he hadn't turned around to look at it, but he could feel it just... lying there. Well, that had been a thing, hadn't it? And by thing, he meant an absolute fucking diabolical nightmare that would stay with him for the rest of his miserable days. He took his hands out of his pockets and looked at them. 
The blood had dried, flaking and peeling like paint. It had settled into all of the fiddly little lines of his palms and gotten underneath his fingernails. Asira fell. Why would he... Why would he do that? Why didn't he say anything? Did he think Crowley would have wanted him to... Fuck. Fuck. Crowley wiped at his eyes with his sleeve, dislodging his sunglasses. He hadn't promised that he'd see to the angel suit, but he was hardly going to leave it in the dirt, was he? Even if, technically, Aziraphale wasn't in it right now. Corporations deteriorated eventually, just sort of, poof, disappeared, off into the ether, as if they'd never been. Crowley could wait around until that happened. It wasn't as if he had anything better to do. Then he'd take the stupid clothes to be dry-cleaned, because of course he bloody would. He was hopelessly in love, and couldn't refuse the angel if he tried. And he had tried. Crowley knelt next to the empty corporation, gently rolling it over by its shoulder. It wasn't him. It wasn't. It just looked like him. But there was nothing of the angel left inside. No sparkling eyes, no annoying witty comebacks, no penchant for delicate petite fours. Just an empty body. There was a bit of dirt on its upturned nose. Crowley wiped it off with his sleeve, gently. Then he closed the eyelids with the pad of a trembling finger and leaned in to press a small kiss to the cooling forehead. The idiot. End of chapter 2